evening, I'm Talia Landry and welcome to the First Light News. Numerous council meetings were held the week following the big headlines released by the Cape Cod Times about Chairman Cedric Cromwell and Councilwoman Cheryl Cromwell owing the IRS over $36,000 in unpaid federal taxes. The outcome of these meetings was the removal of Chairman Cedric Cromwell's financial responsibilities of the tribe, along with his responsibilities on the Gaming Authority. Cedric Cromwell remains on council as the chairman, but his financial responsibilities have now been transferred to Vice Chair Jesse Little Doe Baird. An article from the Mashpee Enterprise appeared in that Friday's paper, quoting an anonymous source as well as tribal citizen Aaron Toby, who is running for a council seat this upcoming February. A special meeting was supposed to be held this Thursday, January 31st, but was canceled the day before. When asked why the meeting was canceled, Tribal Communications responded by saying it was due to the council voting to suspend the meeting. With tribal operations out of money and council seats up for election, the future of operations is uncertain. And with that being said, tribal elections are right around the corner for six open council seats. The elections will take place on Sunday, February 10th. Enrolled elders and disabled persons registered to vote may start voting at 1 p.m and all enrolled registered voters remaining will be able to vote from 2 to 4 p.m. The Tribal Council candidates are as follows. Incumbent Carlton Hendricks Jr., incumbent Winnie Johnson Graham, and incumbent Ivana Vant are seeking re-elections. They are up against tribal citizens Denise Johnson Hathaway, Aaron Toby Jr., Brian Whedon, Joanne Fry, Rita Pocknett Gonzalez, and Marie Stone. The candidate forum will take place on Tuesday, February 5th from 5 to 8 p.m. The candidates are given the opportunity to welcome and greet voters as well as distribute candidate materials from 5 to 6. The forum of questioning will begin at 6 p.m. Again, election day is on Sunday, February 10th from 1 to 4 p.m. Stay tuned for election updates throughout the week. In lieu of all the media attention regarding the tribe and its finances, tribal treasurer Gordon Harris released a statement in response to confidential financial information being leaked this morning. The statement says, This leak of confidential financial information is clearly an attack on our tribe, designed to raise suspicion with non-tribal partners and allies, and so discord within the tribal citizenry. It's difficult enough to fight for our land and combat the assaults on our sovereign rights without having to deal with leaks intended to undermine the hard work and credibility of dedicated, committed tribal servants. It continues on to explain that the leak was referencing the tribe's 2016 audit. The official finding of the audit was found to need improvement, which is a common outcome for audit reports at many organizations. It is important to remember that local media outlets have always been quick to take any negative findings on the tribe to turn it into news whether it be on tribal operations, council, or individual tribal members. Whatever the situation may be, they always seem to turn a little bit of information into a whole mess of circumstances, betraying the tribe in the worst light. They even go as far as to dig up ancient history on individual tribal members and bring it up in any situation they're in, no matter how old or irrelevant it may be. But in other news, the Congress reintroduced the House Tribal Bill for 2019. The refiled H-5244 bill was reintroduced as H.R. 312, the Mashpee Wampanoag Tribe Reservation Reaffirmation Act. The new bill included an amendment that reinforces the intergovernmental agreement signed between the tribe and the town of Mashpee in 2008, known as the IGA. The amendment was pushed for inclusion on the bill by the Mashpee Board of Selectmen to protect the town from future land claim lawsuits. Now I'll send it over to Kobe Howerton for an update from the youth. Thanks, Talia. The Mashpee Falcon boys and girls varsity basketball teams came to the Community and Government Center to face the Randolph Blue Devils. The girls basketball team continued on their winning ways with an exciting win over the Randolph girls team, making them qualify for the playoffs for the first time since 2012. The boys game came down to the final possession as Kendall Rose hit a buzzer beater basket to give the Falcons the win. Both games can be seen in their entirety on Mashpee TV 99 and online at mashpeetv.com. The Education Department is offering a four-day winter camp for grades 1 through 6 for the February vacation from 8.30 to 4.30. The camp is open to 25 students and is on a first-come, first-served basis. Children will enjoy a variety of fun activities, field trips, and more. 
Contact Kitty Hendricks Miller to reserve your child spot today at 508-477-0208, extension 143. The Education Department Career Pathways for Travel Youth continues college tours throughout the next few months for high school juniors and seniors with a parent or guardian. The tour includes transportation from the Community and Government Center as well as a hotel stay in per diem. Check out the upcoming list of scheduled college tours. You must RSVP for the tours prior to going. Contact John Hanlon to save your spots today. Also, the National Indian Health Board is offering an amazing fellowship program for all federally recognized Native American youths ages 18 to 24. The fellows in the Health Policy Fellowship will work directly with their tribal leaderships to identify one priority health issue. Then they will learn how to analyze policy in their issue area, create informed recommendation, and advocate for change. The program is for one year and runs June 2019 to May 2020. Applications are due March 30th, 2019 by 11.59 p.m. For more information and to download an application online, visit the following link. And that is all I have for the youth update. Stay tuned for our monthly newscast to hear the latest from the Mastery Wampanoag Tribal Youth. Back to you, Talia. Thanks, Kobe. Indian Health Services will be offering new programs within the upcoming weeks, starting with Weight Watchers Support Group. The group will focus on educational tools and group discussion on achieving and maintaining weight loss every Thursday from 4 to 5 p.m. starting March 7th. Diabetes Management Program is starting on March 11th for every Monday from 4.30 to 6 p.m. for four weeks. This program will provide education, support, and skills to achieve diabetes control. You can register for either program with Wesley McKean at 508-539-6917. The Mashpee Wampanoag Tribe's Health and Human Services has kicked off the 360 project, Turning Lives Around. The Project 360 seeks to address the opioid epidemic by ways of decreasing the stigma and misuse of all substances and increasing holistic and cultural wellness with a strong focus on self-education, self-empowerment, and self-sustaining. If you have anyone that is interested in giving back to our community, please submit a proposal for service form to the Mashpee Wampanoag Tribe Health and Human Service Department. For more information about this project, call 508-477-0208, extension 171. There are a few new job opportunities out within the tribal community, including several for the Mashpee Wampanoag Indian Health Services, including a dental assistant, nurse, registered nurse, medical records technician, and custodial worker. Visit usajobs.gov and search Mashpee to apply today. Also, Smoke Signals is seeking Wampanoag artisans that are skilled in either wampum bead production or traditional weaving. Wampanoag artists that participate in the bead making or weaving will be paid a fair and competitive rate for their service. Please contact the following for further information. And lastly, many committees are still seeking interested and dedicated tribal members to join their team. The newly developed Land Use Committee is seeking members to serve. Duties will consist of land use planning and land acquisition recommendations. The Powwow Committee is also seeking members to organize the tribe's annual powwow. There's also one open seat on the Housing Commission and Enrollment Committee. Any tribal members interested in serving on any of these mentioned committees, please submit a letter of interest to Francie Dyan at francis.dyan at mwtribe-nsn.gov. And that's all we have for our First Light News update. If you have any announcements you wish to be covered or any feedback of reported stories, you can contact me at talia at We'll see you next month for more travel updates. Peace Kanash.